Um, Forrest Galante and I am a wildlife biologist and host of Animal Planets Extinct or Alive. The excitement was through the roof, uh, almost to the point of not being believable. You know, when we first saw her, we've named her Fern. When we first saw her sitting there under the bush, it was like, I literally, there's a video where I fall to my knees because I honestly couldn't even believe it. Like, it was such a big accomplishment. We held out so much hope that the Fernandina tortoise could still be there. And then to actually see one, like, in situ, you know, living in the flesh, sitting under the bush, it was overwhelming. We literally started jumping around going, bravo, bravo, because we just couldn't even believe it. I mean, it was unbelievable. Yeah. What I do as a biologist is specialize in animals that could be wrongfully deemed extinct. And so I put in years of research, effort, and planning to go to Fernandina and to get the permits to go there and look for the specific animal. So it was very targeted. It took a lot of research and work, and um, we accomplished it. We went looking for the Fernandina Island Galapagos tortoise. There was only ever been one scene in history, and it was 1906, so 113 years ago, and it was a single individual male. Now, the reason that nobody's seen one unlike most extinction cases, it's not due to hunting and crazy pressure from humans, but because the island itself in the Galapagos, Fernandina Island, is an active volcano that erupts constantly. So it's covered in lava, it's super hot, um, it was 120 degrees in the, in the sun while we were there, and there's barely any vegetation for refuge or for animals, you know, like a herbivore, like a tortoise, to hide under or graze with. So conditions were brutal, it was all on foot walking over lava fields, uh, there were multiple times we actually fell through the lava because it kind of caverns and crystallizes, fell through it, got cut up, banged up, heat stroke, sunstroke, I mean, you name it. But it was a tough, a tough few days, um, but we found her on day three. So, you know, we planned on spending two weeks on the volcano and we made it three days in. <laughs> What's interesting is because the island is so harsh, nobody actually has really attempted to try and locate this animal until this search effort. People have speculated whether or not they're still there. Within the island, areas that aren't covered in lava are these little green space kind of Edens. And so we targeted one of those spaces and within those green spaces, there's bushes, there's trees, there's just a little bit of coverage. So she was sheltering from the sun under a bush. Uh, first we found scat, then we found a bedding area, and then finally we found the animal. So it was a great progression. I mean, it was literally like piecing all the clues together. Um, found her. And then because she is literally the only female that's ever been seen by human beings, the only one in history, now the rarest animal on earth, she was collected and taken to a fantastic breeding facility called the Fausto Lorena uh, Tortoise Program or something like that, called the Fausto Lorena Tortoise Breeding Facility in Santa Cruz, uh, which used to have Lonesome George, the world famous icon of the last of its species. Now, what's great is she's a female. As a female tortoise, they can actually retain viable sperm in their system for a long, long time, up to 20-something years. So because she was skinny and under stressful conditions, she wouldn't be producing offspring regardless. But now that she's in this breeding facility, a couple different things are going to happen. One is funds and finances are going to go towards looking and locating a mate, a male. And secondly, and perhaps the biggest hope is that she actually has viable sperm stored within her and once she fattens up and gets comfortable in the facility she could actually produce some uh, some fertile eggs. As soon as an animal is deemed extinct all efforts are given up, all funding is removed, there is that's the end, right? Extinction is final, it means gone forever. So my little group and what we do is we put resources towards looking for these animals that could actually still be out there and what that does is it creates a story of hope. Right? When we think that we as human beings have destroyed something, removed it from this planet forever, and then somebody, whether it's me or, or anybody, goes out there and actually gives it a full-on effort to look for it, and in this case finds it, it's hope-inspiring. It means there's hope for these animals. It means we haven't wiped them out as we think we have. They're not gone forever, and if we can just put in a little bit of effort, we might be able to actually bring them back. It's the greatest scientific accomplishment in my life. It's the greatest personal accomplishment in my life. It is the pinnacle of anything I've ever done. To find an animal like this, and not just any animal, but a tortoise, the icon of conservation and extinction, and a giant Galapagos tortoise, I get choked up just thinking about it. I mean, it's so unbelievably amazing and incredible that I, I, I'm actually still not even sure if it happened. There's gonna be a little bit of stuff leaked from Animal Planet over the next couple weeks. Um, there'll be stuff on the news upcoming this week and footage that you guys have, exclusive footage. Um, but the actual whole expedition from start to finish, arriving at the Galapagos, interviewing eyewitnesses, going to the volcano, going through all the struggles we did, and of course finding the animal and delivering it to the breeding facility, that will all be aired this summer on Animal Planet during season two of Extinct or Alive. Uh, it's supposed to be top secret, but I will say that I'm going to 
a very special place in Vietnam to look for an animal called the Asian unicorn. And anybody that looks that up will know what it is, but it's very cool. Yeah, I think just for everybody from Santa Barbara, you know, I run into a lot of people I know on the streets and see people all over and they're always very supportive and appreciative and, you know, thank you to everybody. And one last thing that I'd say is a huge thank you to the Galapagos National Parks and the Galapagos Conservancy who supported this effort in the Galapagos. And if you care about this, uh, if you go onto my website or, or my Facebook or social media channels, we're actually doing a fundraising effort now, which will lead to a return trip to Fernandina, not for myself, but for a whole handful of scientists to try and locate a male, a mate for Fern. All right. Look at the cameras. Time to be famous. All right. Oh, there it is. That's awesome. It's Sly and Arnie. This one's Sly. This one's Arnie. They're both boys. You're good guys. Huh? You're good guys. Yeah, tickle heads. Tickle heads. They're a lot smaller than Fern. <laughs> Not hungry. Oh, right here. He wants it. He's just being difficult. Yeah. This might take a sec, that's all. There he goes. Yummy. Wide three shot might be kind of cool. Want some slay? What are you hissing about? It's your favorite food. Fine, I'll give it all to Arnie then. Aww. Here, here, look. This is like McDonald's for tortoises. Super unhealthy. It's really not that bad, it's just a bunch of sugar. But they love it. No problem, man. Do a story on tortoises, might as well see a couple. You need anything else with me? No, I think that'd be it. <laughs>